Right, so I've done the faffing around. Um, let's just have a little look what we've got. So we've got section stuff through there. We've got this thing happening here. I haven't really done much with that, but uh, we picked that up later with the detail. This is one to 20, by the way. So if you wanted to create a sort of detail of this, then you can set the scale a little bit bigger and just scale out the um, exploded vector lines. Probably better to plan ahead and uh, just get the sizes correct in the first instance. So this is just an image. Um, these are this is an image and some again some vector stuff going over the top of that. So it's a kind of a mixture between one and the other. It's a very nice way to work in layout. It allows you to do a little bit of faffing just to get something that looks you know, a little bit more um, presentable. Clients love to see a bit of colour in everything as well and it just gives everything a bit of a lift. You could even add some shadowing if you wanted to to this um, but you have to get the shadow set right in the scene in SketchUp because it's not great um, control in layout. So what I want to do now is add some um, annotation to this and some entourage, these sort of uh, bits of um, section cuts and elevation markers. Now the scrapbook is a wonderful thing. Uh, it's like just dragging in xrefs. The basic stuff you get is um, really good. Uh, I've got this stuff here. I'm looking at sections and elevations, but if you wanted to put trees in for whatever reason, then you've got a lot of trees. You just basically drag stuff in from here. So you can add some nice little trees to your scheme. Should you have a scheme that suited that, you can scale these things as well. So scrapbook is a fantastic uh, little link. Um, but I'm going to go for uh, drafting symbols. Um, what am I looking for? TV sections elevation. So I'm just going to drag in this section marker. And that's already done for me. So then I can edit these things. I can double click. And this allows me to sort of maybe stretch this thing out. Or just pull it down. From this point, if I just pull that down, I'm just basically extending this. But if I wanted to go in and edit this bit, I could keep double clicking until you get right down to the basic geometry. So this is made up of one line, another line, which is then nested and grouped into this thing, which is then nested and grouped into that thing, and the whole thing. I want to get out. Gives you this. Oh, it stretched it. Oh, we don't like that. So. Oh, it's actually stretched it. Okay, so if I wanted to just move this a bit further down, I would have to double click and then drag around that, and then I can move this down. And if I put my finger on the shift key, I'm constraining the, the movement, so I could stretch it down like that, and then I can pick this one up and just pull that down as well so it meets with it. Okay, so I thought it was probably a little bit too good to be true. But then I can pop this up and put it on there. It needs a little bit of adjustment, but this is the way this works. So I put that sort of section marker there. I could also put another one. Oh, let's lock that out for safety sake. So references, click that. This thing, which is on vectors. If I now create another layer and call this, so rename. Annotation. What you're trying to create with the layers in um, layout is sort of sensible layers. The layers in SketchUp, these are really the layers that you would use you know, for your modeling, like you would uh, in sort of AutoCAD. They don't have all the control that they do in AutoCAD, but a combination of these layers linked with these layers allows you to produce something that's fairly sophisticated. And again, this isn't AutoCAD. AutoCAD costs a lot more money than a package like this. And you can't really do some of the stuff um, based on a 3D model in AutoCAD that you can do in this very easily. So it is a nice way to work. So I'm just going to move that, nudge that down a bit so it comes down to the bottom. And then I'll take my section line and just drag that down a bit more. So there you go. That's kind of got a section that I'm happy with. Let's move it off there and again you can put in different line thicknesses for this uh, you can do anything you like to edit the text um, again just keep double clicking into this 
until you get down to the text layer. They are buried in there somewhere, and it's a question of just click, double click, double click, double click until you get to it, and then you can call this what you want. So let's just have A. Let's go back and then click that. And then click that. So I'm going to put A there, and then I can kind of move this up to there. If I want to put AA there, I guess I could put AA there. But <clears throat> so that's how you could produce the section cuts. To put some dimensions in, you're going to be using the dimension tool. Now the dimension tool is takes a little bit of getting used to. I'll be honest with you. Um, it's not the most user friendly of elements within layout. But again, if you're not too fussy. Um, about the way that the uh, leader lines and everything else kind of work, and, uh, and you're happy with something like this, then that's great. Now, problem is this is uh, 0.012 of a meter, which is certainly not the units I would want to use, and certainly not the size I want to use. So let's go and amend our units first. And there's a couple of things we need to consider when we are using this dimension tool. So we'll go down to the dimensions on here, choose our dimension and look at our dimension style. So we've got the positioning of the text in relation to the uh, arrows. We've got this thing called auto scale. Now auto scale will recognize a viewport and provided I'm clicking from sort of one point to another. Notice it's now going down sort of two, three, four, it's, it's resorting to that 2.35 for some, some reason. So it's picking up that vector line or something. So let's just see if I can turn off or close lockout vectors. And see what happens again. No. Nope does seem to like that, 0.12. Okay, well if you do get a problem with this, and I'm kind of okay with this, it's going up fine until it hits that, that line there and it's just checking out to 0.12. I don't know whether it's because it's off center, it just wants to snap to that end point. It's just determined to get this to work. No, it just doesn't see. So I said, there are some little quirks with this, so the way around that is to not say auto scale, turn that off and change the scale to your viewport scale. So one to 20 in this case, meter, let's change that to millimeter and the precision will be one mil will be fine. So now it's gonna just measure this and multiply by 20 to give us a correct scale. So the height of this is now gonna be okay, 2429. Um, we can have sort of the width coming in and just maybe make it from there to there and we can take that up 2250. We can then start looking at the depth of these things. So from overall outside to overall outside we got 500. Um, again we keep working this, maybe put it to there. So. This is giving you a whole series of dimensions which are based on, it's snapping to the various points. Um, you know, you can go as far as you want. Now I kind of don't like the way that this, this works here, but if I wanted to change anything in this dimension, you can kind of control these bits, drag these bits around to adjust. Make sure all of your snaps turned on as well, just to make life easier for yourself. But Basically, I want to show you how to control the way these things look. So the basic setup of the dimension is controlled in the dimension style. So again, auto scale turned off, 1 to 20 turned on. Um, depending on where you want the text to sit, then that's these things. Um, the precision, you can have 0.1 of a millimeter or 1 of a mil, and you can have millimeter, feet, inches, etc., etc. Um this controls whether you show millimeters or not. Okay, so that's another thing you could possibly do. And um, what else can we do? If we want to change the way that these lines work and the arrows work, then all that lives up on the shape style. So again, if I didn't want the arrows to look like that, I could choose maybe arrow to look like that and 
this one I think it is. And again, if I didn't want it to be two points, I could make it one point so I can see it a bit more clearly. One more thing I could do is change the line thickness to point 0.2. So again, I'm getting thinner lines. So again, much, um, very controllable. So again, very, very controllable. Um, a little bit of faffing. And once I've set this once, I can then use my style to pick on that. And I can paste it onto this. And I get the much better. It doesn't change the text. The text is kind of controlled separately. But then I can use that same sort of setting for everything else. A bit lost at these ones, okay for that. So again, it's a question of, sort of finding something that uh, suits your needs, but that's the way that the dimensions work. So I'm not too disappointed that it failed to work. I wanted to show you that it's not absolutely perfect, but this is how you control it. The other thing that you've got is this leader option. So again, if I wanted to sort of just highlight something, um, click on that, and again, this looks very, very clunky. Um, top shelf, or whatever it's called. So that's very, very nasty to start off with. But again, you can change the text, you can separate this off, and if I select this and I go up to the shape style, my start arrow can be the same as the other one. The end arrow definitely not have a blob on it. Um, the only other thing I don't like about this is the fact that it's got no dog leg on it. I really like the, I don't like that sort of landing gap thing going on there without a, a leader extension. So if I double click on this to edit this line, finger on the control key, just tap a little dot into that point, and then I can pull this down square, and then I can move my text to suit. And I think that just looks much, much nicer as far as the text. So you can copy this then, so that I can then just drag this up um, with my finger on the control key, make an ex um, a copy of that. I can copy this text as well, so it can all line through nicely. I can just change this to wardrobe side, and then delete that bit, you know, whatever, hook, see detail, etc., etc. So arrows and dimensions and everything else controlled via the shape style option. So don't forget to either auto dimension or control the dimension based on the section. Okay, sometimes it works perfectly, sometimes it's a little bit um, awkward. Okay, so that's pretty much it as far as um, this goes. We'll have a little look at the um, other page, um, which is down here. So we've got page two, which is the details. I'll just show you how you can put a nice little clipping mask around one of these images if you wanted it to be nice and round, and we can sort of take it from, from there to say, you know, hook detail or something like that. And that'll be it. Okay, so the final video, we'll be looking at some extra bits and pieces you can do within layout, um, but basically, uh, as far as a piece of software goes, for the price, it is pretty, pretty good.